It's 100 degrees right now and I want to see what I can harvest from my three gallon containers. I'm going to start off by showing you my baby's harvest this morning. As you can see, we have a lot of bitten tomatoes that she then left here. This one is still pretty good. This is a Brad's Atomic Grape, so I'm going to bring it inside with me. And then the rest of these, I think I'm just going to leave out here because they have bite marks now. And this one was so green. But that's her little harvest, so let's do our own. I'm starting off with these yellow pear tomatoes, most of which have already started splitting. As you can see right here, because it took me forever to come out here. And some of them are even starting to dry up on the plant. Right here. So I want to bring them indoors now so the plant can continue producing. Now one thing I should point out is I was super excited for this variety because it just looks adorable. They look like little yellow teardrops and the plant has actually been quite productive because I've been snacking on them. But I will say that this isn't my favorite flavor profile. It's good and probably better than any store bought but compared to other varieties that I've grown they're just not outstanding for me personally. But they are very adorable. This variety is called Baxter's Bush Cherry. And I haven't tried it yet, but this plant hasn't been as productive as my other ones. The color on it is very beautiful though. I do see some starting to ripen, but even these that are turning orange didn't get very large at all. So I'm gonna start some more tomato seeds this month for monsoon season. I'm gonna start this variety again, and then I'm gonna plant them in the garden beds to see how they perform there. This variety is a Roma VF, and I think it's mislabeled because the shape is very different. I'm used to Romas being a little bit more elongated, but this one's more round. It's still very pretty nonetheless. This one also says it's a Roma and it's got that same shape going on. I spot what looks like hornworm poop, so I'm gonna be careful with this plant. Hopefully there's none on here because the birds have been taking care of them for me, but I'm still gonna be careful just in case. I don't see the tag anywhere, but there's some really beautiful clusters on here. Another one back here. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, it breaks me out when the leaves touch me. Okay, I've got some right there. I'm trying to harvest all the ripe ones, even if they're not in large clusters. I want to see what variety of eggplant this is. This is an Oswald eggplant, and I don't know how big it gets. And the fruit looks really beautiful. It's still got a nice sheen to it, so I could hold off a little bit longer. But one thing I've noticed when it gets really hot is the eggplants I have don't seem to get very large. They just start shifting from that shiny finish to more of a matte finish, and then eventually they get really hard. So I think I'm going to bring a few of them inside, and I'll let the second flush of eggplants get larger than these are right now. And as you can see, some of them are already starting to form right there, and then back here as well. Next to it, I have my infamous yellow peppers, which have started becoming some of my favorite, actually. If you guys saw some of my previous videos, the first time I ever tried this variety, I bit into the pepper raw, assuming that it would be sweet, not spicy, and it turned out to be one of the spiciest peppers I've ever tried. Okay, one, two, three. Oh! <laughs> Those are not sweet. Uh, oh God, the pain's just getting worse. And it was very painful, but also kind of hilarious. And now I love putting them in my cooking. I'm just careful about how much I add because they tend to be very spicy. And I don't know what exact variety they are, but they are pretty delicious and flavorful. That's also how I learned that most likely if the pepper is very curved, it's going to be spicy. And look at this one. The rest of these are still green, so I'm going to leave them on the plant and I'll come back and harvest them in a few more days. Because the temperatures are so hot in Arizona right now, it only takes a few days for everything to ripen in the garden. And so I'm constantly coming out here to harvest things. Otherwise, they start drying up on the plant like you see here, and then the plant isn't as productive. But I'm seeing some blooms forming over here, which is a really good sign. Something I want to know is when the temperatures start to heat up, my pepper plants slow down on production. But then as the days cool in the fall, they pick up production again and we get large harvest every single week. So if your pepper plants aren't very productive at this moment, that's to be expected. This was a new planting this year, but my older pepper plants seem to produce all year round. And I think that's just because they're more mature and established. This is a Como eggplant and these can get pretty large. As you can see, it still has some green down here, but the purple on it is starting to turn very matte. So I'm gonna harvest it now, only because the temperatures are so high up there that my eggplant don't get as large as they usually do in the fall. So I'd rather harvest them young instead of letting them get overripe. And then at that point, they're inedible. The good thing is that I see some more blooms starting to come through, so we'll still continue to get production this summer. 
and here I've got my shishito peppers. I'm harvesting them now because they don't seem to get very large for me. I mean, these are a good size, but my last harvest was pretty small. And I feel like if I leave them on here for too long, they start to shrivel up on the plant, as you can see right here. And they start to change into more of a yellowish color. So I want to harvest them when they're so nice and green. During the fall, hopefully they can get a little bit bigger. Oh, and I think I see a red one down here. This one is completely dried up. So maybe I'll just toss it back in there. And here's what I harvested for my three gallon containers. 